Tanks are a valued military asset in nearly every country's military, even after the Second World War which saw most of the last massive tank-on-tank -tank battles. Tanks have proven useful in battlefields across the globe. However, the race to consistently develop new and better tanks has been a challenge. New designs sought to improve capabilities such as accuracy, weight, sighting systems, and countermeasures against mines and missiles. Thus, it's unsurprising that there has been a wide range of tank models, variants, and types that have been developed over the years. But among all the various technological advancements, one tank has reigned supreme above them all – the M1 Abrams. So what exactly is the M1 Abrams, and what makes it so much better than every tank currently employed today? To begin with, the M1 Abrams tank model is the American Army's current main battle tank, as well as that of several countries like Iraq and Saudi Arabia. Since the tank has been exported, albeit without advanced sighting systems, the variant currently in the US inventories is one of the world's heaviest tanks boasting a massive weight of 68 tons. The model has multiple innovative features that set it apart from other tank models and what is considered the heavy tank class. But to understand how the M1 Abrams achieved this remarkable title of the world's best heavy tank, it's important to understand why it was developed in the first place. During the Cold War, the Russians were definitely outpacing the US in tank technology. Tanks such as the T-55 and T-72 main battle tank had a sighting, armor, and gun system all superior to what the US and its allies could field at the time. The current tank in the US arsenals, the aging M60 Patton, was a reliable and superb tank that performed excellently during the Vietnam War and later Persian Gulf War. However, despite having a good enough tank, the US wanted the best tank. Production started in collaboration with several NATO allies, including West Germany, to make a tank used by all of the armies and which had common parts that could make maintenance a breeze when operating with coalition armies. The first design this collaboration produced was the experimental MBT-70, which was developed with a great amount of assistance from West German engineers. However, despite the early technological advancements, the new design far exceeded production costs, which made many politicians doubt if it was worth continuing. Ultimately, Congress decided it was not worth the costs, and the MBT-70 project was officially cancelled in December of 1971. Despite this failure, Major General William Robertson de Sobry was appointed to lead an expert team to continue developing a new tank in secret. This team was tasked with determining the new tank model's requirements to successfully replace the M60 Patton. After multiple collaborations between the Pentagon and Congress, a contract was awarded to Chrysler Corporation and General Motors to produce the new model's prototypes. The Department of Defense ultimately chose the prototype developed by Chrysler Defense, now under the General Dynamics Land Systems Division. After several years of testing and tweaking, the final product was finally ready for production in 1979. Between 79 and 85, the first production run of the M1 Abrams went into full development. The first models were formally added to the American military inventories by 1980. By 1992, more than 6,000 M1A1 Abrams were produced. Of course, not all of these were the original M1 design. Several new features were added between the initial and the second production run, with the biggest change being the main gun employed. The initial production run tanks had the 105mm rifled guns, while the second production run ones had a better smoothbore cannon installed, the M265 120mm. Interestingly enough, West Germany deserves the credit for creating this cannon since it was initially designed for the Leopard II, which became the main German battle tank. Despite the influence of German design and some of the tank's major systems, the General Dynamics Land Systems deserves the basic design credits of the M1 Abrams base model. Additionally, all of the tanks themselves have been manufactured in the US. Between 1980 and 1996, production was done at the Detroit Arsenal tank plant. Since then, the main production has shifted to the Lima Army Tank Plant. This plant has been producing M1 Abrams since 1980. Each unit on average costs $6.21 million to produce, however the costs have increased in recent years. An inflation-adjusted estimate suggests that the tank costs more than $8.92 million per tank in 2016. To date, almost 10,288 tanks have been produced. However, the number is approximate and does not include any prototype productions. There have also been wide varieties of tanks produced to meet various needs or improve on existing technologies. Despite some of these equipment upgrades, the basics of the hull design remain untouched. The tank boasts a forward gun length of 32 feet. The hull or main body of the tank is almost 24 feet long in length. All of the tank variants also carry a four-person crew, each with specific roles in the tank's operation. One person serves as the machine gunner and is also the tank commander who directs where the tank will go and what weapon systems to employ. Then there's the gunner whose job is to sight and fire the main gun. 
The loader assists the gunner by grabbing ammo from the back and getting the gun ready to fire. Lastly, of course, is the driver, who sits up front. The M1 Abrams is meant for defeating any tank it comes across, and its ammunition is one of the main tools it uses to accomplish this task. One of the features that make the ammunition so useful is its depleted uranium and sabot characteristics. Depleted uranium gets extremely hot and packs a tremendous amount of force, while the sabot projectile characteristic allows the needle-like rounds to be fired from the main cannon with tremendous force. This enables the round to penetrate armor that no other munitions can. Combining these two technologies together makes for an incredibly deadly duo. To accomplish this tank hunting task, the base variant is equipped with 55 rounds for its M68A1 rifled gun. In comparison, the later models equipped with the longer M256A1 variant have only 40 rounds of ammunition. In addition to its main gun, the tank also comes standard with a 50 caliber heavy machine gun for lightly armored and entrenched targets. Lastly, there are two 7.62mm M240 machine guns to help repel infantry attacks against the vehicle. Despite its massive size, the tank can actually reach a max speed of 45 miles per hour on roads, while off-road, travel can still reach an impressive 43 miles per hour, all with a max range of 310 miles. Later models, such as the M1A2, perform slightly less than the earlier models due to being about 10 tons heavier with advanced armor upgrades. Because of this, the max range in this regard is a little lower than the flagship model, coming in at around 260 miles. Even though the tank is the most advanced in the world, its systems have also been proven in combat. The first use of the M1 Abrams in combat was during the Persian Gulf War of 1991. Iraqi Soviet T-55 and T-62s were older models fielded against the M1 Abrams, giving the Americans a clear competitive advantage during the war. The T-72s, the most advanced tank created by the Soviets, did not even have modern rangefinding equipment or night vision systems. As a result, the US inflicted heavy damage on the enemy tanks, with minimal losses suffered. Only 23 US tanks were destroyed completely, and these were mostly due to missiles, mines, and friendly fire. The older enemy tanks could not hit most US tanks due to their limited sighting systems and lack of night vision equipment. In fact, none of the M1 Abrams were destroyed due to direct enemy tank fire. Even those damaged due to indirect fires, no American lives were lost in those tanks, proving its crew survival capabilities. In the Persian Gulf War, it was clearly evident that the sighting system, night vision equipment, and long-range gun could enable the M1 Abrams to hit any tank it wanted to while still staying out of range of return fire. The long range of 2,500 meters supported by the Abrams was crucial in desert warfare. On the other hand, Iraqi tanks had a lower range of about 2,000 meters. Thus, American M1 Abrams had a clear buffer zone of 500 meters from the moment an Iraqi tank entered its range to the moment the Iraqi tank could hit the M1 Abrams. Several high-profile victories at the Battle of Norfolk and the Battle of 73 Eastings that left dozens of Iraqi tanks destroyed with no losses on the US side proved that the Abrams in a direct tank-on-tank -tank combat was untouchable. One of the advancements in technology after the war was the addition of combat identification panels. These panels could show an infrared beacon to friendly troops, since of all the tanks lost in the war, the vast majority were due to friendly fire. Another addition after the war was the M136 AT4 anti-tank rocket system. This weapon is actually designed to be fired by individual people and used when the battle was taking place in an urban area. Urban battles require smaller weapons as the main long gun may not turn completely. More advancements would follow as the tank continued service into the 21st century. A second, larger storage area was installed in the rear of the tank to hold more ammunition. When the M1A2 came into existence, the commander's situational awareness was improved with a separate weapon station and thermal imaging system. Other technologies added were more advanced navigation equipment and radio interference units to jam enemy signals such as cell phone signals for IEDs. A system overhaul known as the System Enhancement Package was also given to make the older model M1A1 tank still serviceable for years to come. By the time the US invaded Iraq again in 2003, the Iraqis were well prepared for the M1 Abrams tank. Utilizing special hunter-killer tank teams and anti-aircraft guns, five Abrams tanks were lost in Karbala and Baghdad's crowded streets. Multiple tanks were also destroyed by US forces to prevent the Iraqis from getting a hold of secret technology on board after they were disabled or became stuck in the mud. 
Such examples prove that even though the tank is the best in the world, contrary to popular belief, it is not invincible. Even though the most current version, the M1A2, is not invincible, that has not stopped the US Army from developing ways to make it so. One of the major areas of study has been toward the XM1202 mounted combat system. This experimental technology envisions replacing not only the M1 Abrams with a lighter, faster, and more powerful tank, but to forego the need for additional armored vehicles for reconnaissance and urban environments. Sort of like the F-35 of tanks, this system will build upon the lessons learned from the Abrams and give commanders more utility and options than before. But with the project still in prototype stages, it's unlikely to replace the Abrams anytime soon. The M1 Abrams will still be expected to have an operating life well into the first half of the century, and will remain a feared opponent for foes for years to come.